checked out Frontier Day so far? Yay. A couple? A couple? Yay! Good! I'm so glad. Okay, so how many of you guys have had a chance to go over into the children's zoo and actually get to touch some of our sheep and goats and some of our other critters? Yay. Awesome! Well, we normally have a show at this time every day where we go all around the world, but in honor of Frontier Day, we wanted to have a show that showcased our children's zoo animals and kind of teach you guys a little bit about them. Now, for those of you guys who are right over there, right next to the, the cone at the end, just to let you know, our very first animal is going to be walking on that bench right over by where that cone is, um, but you'll have plenty of warning as far as before they get over there. Now, our very first animal that we're bringing out is probably one that those of you guys who did touch the animals got to touch. It's one of our goat species. This is the smaller out of the two breeds that we have in the children's zoo. This is a Nigerian dwarf goat. And all three of these are siblings. The one that is in the middle is a year old, about as, as big as they get. She is a full grown adult. And then her two brothers were actually born this year. They're actually twins. And the one in the middle, the one that's a full grown adult, is named Trixie. Her brother that's closer to me is named Cosmos. And then the one that's solid brown is named Prince. Now, the Nigerian uh, goats did originate originally, goats originated in Africa, um, but these guys were actually brought over to the United States by zoos. Um, there are a couple of stories that they were brought over as food sources potentially. If that was the case, it was so long ago that there's no real definite records. The big reason that zoos such as ourselves have them is because of their small size. They are a great animal to have in your children's zoo for the children to be able to interact with. Now these guys are also used um, within the farming industry as well. Believe it or not, they actually produce the most amount of milk for their size, and they have a really high buttermilk or butterfat content to their milk. So they are a really good one for creating cheese and different things like that. Now, they have been showing off how they can turn around up on the boxes for you, but they have been working on walking up here and giving you guys a front row view yeah. of them. We do ask for all of these animals during the show that you please refrain from touching them. They are definitely still in training. We will have an animal at the end that you can touch. And of course, our barnyard animals are over in the children's zoo. So later on today, you guys can go over there to be able to touch them. And then, sir, once they do get down to here, if I could have you just either scoot in or just kind of take a step over this way, so that way the one goat that's going to be walking up here will be able to, uh, to get by. And then to tell you guys a little bit more about them, um, they are, uh, um, like I said, used for their milk. Um, but they do have a pretty unique coloration. Hi, Prince. What are you doing? <laughs> so the coloration um, with the spots is actually how Cosmos, the first one who just jumped up there, got his name. And you'll notice that Trixie has those spots as well. Those are called moon spots when they have those. So that's how Cosmos ended up getting named Cosmos. Um, now I do know it is the very first time that our teenage volunteers um, have been handling these guys during a show. Uh, Amy, did you want to switch for Cosmos? Yep. Cool. So we can have him show off. 
And if you guys ever come on a day that isn't quite as busy, Prince does know how to do this as well. We just wanted to be able to give you guys a little bit more seating instead of having both sides uh, be clear. So both of them are knowing how to do this. Now we do have another species of goat as well, or another breed of goat. If you guys go over to the children's zoo, we do have a larger breed called the Nubian goats. Those are the ones with the big floppy ears. So I definitely invite you guys to head over to the Children's Zoo after the show. We are going to also be doing a couple of different demonstrations over there. We're going to be shearing um, our llama and our alpaca in just a little bit. Now, these goats are herbivores. And most of the animals we're going to be bringing out are herbivores. That means that they eat only plants. And plants are really, really hard to digest. So the goats have actually evolved a multiple chambered stomach. They're what are called ungulates. When you have a four chambered stomach and you have the hooves, you're an ungulate. So when you guys head over to the children's, you see if you guys can spot some of the other hoofed animals that are over there, because we actually have multiple ungulates. Our next animal that we're bringing out also is an herbivore. Can any of the kids tell me what that word means? Anybody hear what I said? Yeah. It only eats plants. Good job. Now this one does not have a multiple chambered stomach though. Why so it has figured out something different to be able to digest the plant matter. What we're bringing out next is our Netherland dwarf rabbit. Now, these do have a dwarfism gene. It's a recessive dwarfism gene. So it's the same as dwarfism in humans. That's why they have their small size. And actually, if you look at it, they've got a little bit of disproportionately large heads. They've got a little bit of uh, disproportionately small ears compared to the size of their heads. So it is a recessive gene. Um, one of the things that makes it really no. tricky with these rabbits is that if you actually breed them with another Netherland dwarf, it's only about a 20% chance that you'll end up with this gene. If you actually breed them with a non-dwarf, though, it's about a 50-50 chance that you'll end up with a dwarfism gene. Now, these are used in the pet trade because of how small they are. That's pretty much the only usage for the Netherland Dwarf is as a pet. However, I do want you guys to be aware, rabbits are really, really shy. They are a prey animal. Other animals out in the wild eat them. So they are very easily scared. They're very high strung. The Netherland Dwarf, is particularly shy and high strung because of how small they are. This is a full grown adult. I mean, this is as big as they get. So if you guys are planning on getting any rabbits as pets and you have children, the rule of thumb is the bigger, the better. You're gonna wanna go and get a big breed of rabbit. This type of breed would be best in an adult only or older teenage household, just because they don't tame quite as quick and they're always gonna stay high strung. We have been working with this one and his brother pretty much every day to even get him to this point. And he still is pretty nervous. I can feel that he's pretty nervous in my hands. So. Um, they, these guys do have some pretty neat things since he is getting at least a little bit calm enough that you guys can kind of check out his face. If you look at his eye placement, it's really far on the sides. As a prey animal, he has his eyes on the side to be able to look for predators. What's really cool about rabbits though, is that they have almost 360 degree vision. The only blind spot that they have is their nose. That way they can be looking out for danger. Now I do know that it's getting kind of a little bit stormy, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put Regulus here back. His brother is named Ian if you do visit them later. And I do know, and I, as I'm putting him back, that I did mention they have evolved a really neat way to be able to digest the plant matter. The rabbits are what are called, uh, they use something called coprophagy. And what that means 
is that they eat their own poo. The first time around, they take it back through again to digest it a second time. Since it is getting pretty stormy though, I'll go ahead and I'll go on to my next animal. Have any of you guys seen that show that we sometimes have at 1.30 where we go around the world? Do you remember who the star of that was? Who was it we were searching for? What was it? Oh, Frances. Frances sometimes is a stand-in. She still uses the same name, though. She goes by the name of Mrs. Chandler when she is a stand-in. Um, it's a stage name because this right here is Chandler. So sometimes Frances is his stand-in and pretends to be Mrs. Chandler for the show. So Chandler here is a pot-bellied pig. These guys are from Asia. And Amy, if you need to, because of the weather, if you need to keep it short, it's fine. I want to make sure we don't get rained on. <laughs> so these guys are also really popular in the pet trade as well. You guys can see how they can be trained to wear a harness. You can also potty train them as well. The one thing to keep in mind with the pigs is that they are natural rooters. That snout that you see is really, really strong. So if you guys have them in your house, they are going to try to uproot your carpeting. They're going to be chewing naturally on things like wooden furniture. And if you let them outside, they are going to be uprooting probably your garden. So do kind of keep that in mind. They are really intelligent though. You can see how Chandler's been trained to follow things. And they are naturally clean. The only reason that they go into the mud is to be able to stay cool or to keep insects off. And we are going to go ahead and go over to our next animal just because I don't want you guys to get rained on. Now our next one is another one that's a little bit on the shy side. She's a little bit unused to being handled, kind of like the rabbit. And this one is an American breed of animals. Now the chicken was originally from Asia, but this breed was created in the United States. This is a Wyandotte chicken. Now they do come in a couple of different colors. We only have the salt and pepper over in the children's zoo. We do have several of these guys. This breed of chicken is the best for laying eggs. And these lay the most number of eggs out of any of the chickens the domestic chickens, and they're really, really good mothers as well. They don't need to have uh, any sort of fertilization to be laying the eggs, and they actually will talk to the egg. They'll talk to the developing baby inside of the egg. Chickens are also really intelligent as well. They've been trained to be able to do things like tic-tac-toe, and they've actually seen that they can remember up to 100 human faces at once. Plus, a lot of people don't know, chickens can see color as well. I'm just gonna see if my handle is, I think they need a couple more minutes. I know we're kind of flying through this really fast because it really seems like it's gonna come dumping down on us uh, soon. But, but uh, this one, if you do wanna visit her, are you guys are ready? Okay, cool. So we're gonna bring out our last animal. Now this one is one after I'm done talking that you guys are welcome to come up afterwards to be able to touch. Uh -huh, no. We do have some hand yeah. sanitizer for you as well. I took a picture of them. We have our Sardinian donkey. These guys are native to Italy and uh, they actually are the closest in coloration to the wild donkeys. If you look, you can see that dark line going down the back over the shoulders and on the ears. That is reminiscent to wild donkeys. It also is one of the reasons that you see them in religious ceremonies and, and in nativity shows as well is because it forms a natural cross shape. Now the, the donkey is not only a pack animal, but it also is also very helpful to us with its milk. Their milk is the closest to human milk in composition. And it has not only been used as a substitute for human milk, but it's also been used as an antibiotic. Plus, Cleopatra used to bathe in it as well. I do feel it's starting to rain, so I'll go ahead and wrap it up right now. If any of you guys do want to touch 
grandma here just form a single file line, please? And we're going to listen to Amy here. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask questions as well. And stay dry, you guys.